Hello. So welcome to the Clutter to Cash Challenge. I want to help you learn how to make money selling your stuff online. How many of you have a closet full of stuff that maybe you don't want anymore? Maybe it doesn't fit anymore? Or for some reason, you've just been holding on to it. I know I do. Did you know that many of those things you could sell online? Now, there are several marketplaces that you could use. And I'm going to be talking to you mostly about Poshmark because it's one of the easiest to get started. I'm Twyla Godinez. I run my bilingual life. I teach English and Spanish online. And the other thing that you don't see most of the time from me is behind the scenes, I run a Poshmark closet. And my Poshmark helps to cover the expenses for many of the other things that I do. So I've been selling online for over 20 years. I started on eBay and Amazon back in the day, and I've even sold a little bit on Etsy. I went back to teaching after a difficult divorce. And when I was teaching, I realized that I needed a little bit more income coming in. So I decided to start selling online again. I really didn't want to deal with the antiques that I was selling on eBay because there was a lot of space that you needed for storage and they were not very fun to ship. So I decided that I would look into selling clothes. And when I was doing my research, I found that Poshmark was a pretty good platform. Poshmark was a pretty good platform to be able to sell my items. It had no insertion fees, so there was no money up front. I only had to pay once I actually sold the item. So that's how I got started with Poshmark. So first, what can I sell? Now we all have closets full of stuff, I'm sure. So what kind of things are in your closet? What could you sell? If you're doing your spring cleaning, Clean out your closets and your garage, and I'm sure you're going to find plenty of things that you could possibly sell online. Books sell well online. Clothes do very well online. Collectibles. These can be anything from vintage type collectibles to Beanie Babies have sold online. I don't suggest getting into the Beanie Babies anymore, but th that's an example. Uh, you can sell your CDs or DVDs. How often do you actually use a CD or DVD anymore? I, I know that I pretty much stream everything. So I have a lot of CDs and DVDs that I'm getting ready to list in the near future. Um, toys. These can be current toys, the hot Christmas items, or these can be vintage toys. Um, I'll be showing you some examples in just a little bit. Just remember, your trash is someone's treasure. Somebody is going to want that thing that you just don't like anymore. Okay, one of the areas that I'm not an expert in, but this just intrigues me, are the vintage t-shirts. Look at the price on this shirt. Almost $3,000 for a t-shirt. This is a vintage ACDC all over print, original 1992 in an extra large size. I mean, it is a very graphic t-shirt, but almost $3,000. I'd like to find a couple of those. Look at this one. I know that in my last class, one of the ladies said that I used to work at Subway. I had this shirt. Look at this, this is a vintage 90s Subway shirt, fresh baked buns, and it sold for $94. Not bad for a shirt that was given to you if you worked there. Now this shirt is something that you actually might find. I have never seen a shirt like this. Toy parts. Okay, my sister is absolutely famous for taking off the backs of every remote control or every toy that we ever own. So needless to say, there is a market for those replacement parts. So this is just the battery cover for this Imagine Next dinosaur. It's kind of a big 
moving dinosaur. And just the battery cover is selling for $10 plus shipping. Here's the remote control. It's only the remote control. It has been tested. That's a good thing to be able to say. If you don't know if it works, you can say untested and you will probably still sell it. Um, but this tested unit was sold for $40. Lego. I've heard it said that Lego is even more valuable than gold because it appreciates in price so quickly. Once a set is retired, the, it kind of goes up. So this Wally set, I'm actually looking at mine across the room. I own this set. I did not pay this price for it. If I'm not mistaken, it was either 60 or $80 to start out with. I know it wasn't over a hundred, but I really like Wally. And as much as I like Wally, it's getting kind of tempting to sell him. I have the set brand new in box. I've never opened it. Um, so he sold for almost $300. So that's not bad if you had, if you did not, if you paid less than $100 for it. Hey, look at this. This is just the one little minifigure. This is a Lego Classic King. And they actually even know which series he's from. And he sold for $10. That's the one little Lego guy. And some of them go even more expensive than that. And here we are, this is a tad bit misleading because this is not for the whole set. This is for the SpongeBob minifigures and the instruction manual only, almost $30. So clean out those closets. Do you have some Lego laying around? Got some game pieces. I've always done well with vintage Scrabble tiles. People will buy these even if they're not complete so that they can make crafts and different things. Um, Scrabble tires are pretty much always a hit. I made a lot of money by finding used board games and buying them and either selling them for the whole set or selling just the pieces. So if you notice this set of Scrabble tiles and card suit tiles went for $9.99 plus $11.75 shipping. So that's a pretty decent deal. Here is, this is a be on the lookout, Bolo. Um, Hannah Montana Mall Madness. This game, Mall Madness, there's a regular version and then there's a Hannah Montana version. They're quite hard to find. Um, so if you ever run across that game, that's something to definitely pick up if you can get it a good deal. So here are just some of the replacement pieces for $4.99 plus $5.99 shipping. So I don't have the whole description, but it says the parts choice. So I'm assuming that you can choose one group of parts that you get for this. That's not normally how a listing is allowed to be made, but I just wanted you to see this game because this is a definite something to be on the lookout for. 1313 Dead End Drive. This is a game to definitely keep your eyes open for. Um, I actually have some pieces to this game that I need to have listed for sale soon. Um, it was made by Parker Brothers, 1313 Dead End Drive. And it's kind of like the old time, it's kind of a version of Mousetrap and Clue. So it's kind of a haunted house type thing. And there's these different traps that your piece can land on. This particular one is the fireplace trap. Um, that little top part spins around and your little piece gets caught into nowhere. So um, just this one piece is going for $6.50. They did get free shipping. It's not very big. It's not very heavy. So it will ship first class. Um, but this is a game to pick up. And if you don't have the whole game, you can just sell the parts. I don't get a lot of Gucci and Prada and Chanel and Louis Vuitton. I don't get a lot of these items in my life. In fact, I've very rarely seen them other than in stores. Um, but if you notice, this is just the Gucci zipper pool. This is for one zipper pool and they sold it for 1950 plus free shipping. 
Now this weighs next to nothing. So I'm sure they were able to ship it first class. So this is just the little zipper pool. Um, so if you pick up a piece of one of these higher end brands, and even if the piece is damaged, you can still sell the hardware. You do want to make sure it's authentic. All your items that you sell online need to be authentic. Okay, here's some Gucci buttons. These are the Gucci shirt buttons. It tells you the exact size. It's a lot of seven. Look at this, it sold for $70 plus $4 shipping. It's a pretty good deal. So even if you find a Gucci shirt that's totally torn up, if it has buttons, you can pull off the buttons and sell the buttons. Okay, here is a button lot from Chanel, Gucci, Louis Vuitton. It's 15 different buttons um, and it sold for $140 plus 450 shipping. So that's a, that would be a pretty nice find. On the other side, on the other hand, craft items. There are lots of things that can be considered a craft item that you might not even think of. Look at this, this is 25 pine cones for $15.99 plus 475 shipping. Do any of you have a tree that gives off pine cones in your yard? I don't, but this would be a pretty good item to have. If you have a pine tree, you can sell the pine cones. I used to do this and drive my family crazy. A hundred toilet paper rolls, identical, empty, clean and ready art craft projects. So I would save the toilet paper rolls until I got a good amount of them to fill a nice box and then I would sell them. You aren't going to make a killing on this, but it's stuff that you're gonna be throwing out. Um, so why would somebody buy these? Think of teachers, think of Sunday school classes, think of Bible schools. If they have a lot of kids coming in for a craft project, yes, they will ask the parents, but you could also go online and buy a hundred of them for $15. And that one even had free shipping. I can't imagine shipping would be too much because I'm sure they don't weigh very much. So think out of the box. So just think about the things laying around your house. Have you thought of something that you might be able to sell? I know that I need to go through my closet and pull out some of the clothes that I no longer wear, particularly the ones that don't fit anymore. And I really need to get those up for sale. They're just taking up space. And if I sold them, I would have a little bit of extra spending cash. How about your DVDs or your CDs? Do you even have a DVD player anymore or a CD player? I had to buy a DVD player to be able to get some of my old home movies. So think about that. Do you have some DVDs or CDs that you might want to sell? Some people do still collect them. Records. People collect those. Um, you'd be surprised. There's collectors or people interested in just about anything. Remember the old saying, one man's trash is another man's treasure. And that's very, very true. Just do some looking online at some of the strange things that are being sold. So now I'm going to give you some of my bonus bolos, some of the things to be on the lookout for. These are things that sell very well or that you would never think of. First, Disney, Dooney, and Burke. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I know about these purses because I myself love these purses. Many of them are only available at the Disney parks. Um, sometimes they're only available at one particular Disney park. Um, they're limited edition. They only release them for a certain amount of time and they're expensive from the get-go. So, the Stooney and Burke Belle Beauty and Beast bag, I'm not sure what the original retail price of this purse was, probably about $400. But look at what it's selling for now. That would be a $1,000 profit, not too shabby. Okay, um, the next one, um, again, the original retail on this was probably around four or $500. I'm not sure because this is actually for three of the items. Um, 
I actually own this pattern in a different kind of bag. And I paid $200 for the messenger bag. Um, yes, this is the one place that I will splurge on myself. I love my Disney and I love my Disney Dooney and Burks. Um, so I'm sure that this listing made at least $500. And I'm not sure these actually those look like they might have been used. So, oh no, it says brand new. Never mind. I know that I have one purse that I used a lot, and I still could get a very high price for because it's still in good enough condition, and it's a very rare one of the first Disney patterns. I could still make money on that purse if I chose to, but it's not going anywhere. Okay, on that same note, Dooney and Burke is pretty expensive to start out with. These lounge fly bags, on the other hand, are less than $100 each. Some of them are $90, but most of them are, some of them can be $40, some of them can be $60, some of them are $70, some of them are $90. Um, so these are like the little mini backpacks. And they also sell very well. All of these patterns are some of the limited edition patterns that you can only get at the Disney parks. But let's say that you paid $100 for these to start out with. Look at those prices. That's a pretty good return on your investment. Now, I'm going to be honest. That last one with the ears, I have this set with the actual official matching ears that are the same pattern as the bag. And I think for the bag and the ears, I think I paid $140 for it. So $140 into 400. I sometimes have a debate on whether I should list that and sell it rather than keep it. But I love Disney. It's still semi-available at Disney World, this pattern. So I think I'm actually going to hold on to it because after this year, it will probably be retired. And I wouldn't be surprised if that price doesn't bump up closer to the $1,000, $1,500, especially since I have the actual matching ears. So I'm going to hold on to it for a little while. I really like it. I'll probably use it for a little while and then I'll make a decision on if they want to sell it. But if you happen across one of these at a yard sale or a Goodwill, definitely pick it up. And you might let me know because you may have a buyer already ready. Okay, this next item I had no clue about. I knew that some workout clothes like Lululemon and Athleta and Fabletics, those brands do very well. This brand I had no clue about. It's the Be Present brand and they have these really pretty embroideries on the back of these pants on the hip and I had some I ended up with some in an estate lot that I bought and I didn't think much of them I thought eh, maybe I'll get twenty dollars each and I started doing my research and I sold almost all of them for over a hundred dollars so keep your eyes open for be present yoga pants I don't believe they're making them anymore so I believe they're no longer putting out new products, or at least their new products don't have the same embroidery. So keep your eyes out for these. I'm sorry, I don't know what happened there. Okay, so think about this and your homework for tonight is to go through your closets, go through your garage, wherever you have some extra stuff, and find three things of your own that you can sell. You get bonus points if it's something weird or something that's not something we've thought of. If you have any questions, make sure to put them in the Facebook group. I will be live again tomorrow, so I hope I catch you here. If not, I will have the replays up until Sunday. I hope this has been helpful and I hope it gets you thinking about the different kinds of things that you sell online. In the next couple of days, we'll get a little bit more in particular about how to go about doing them. I'll see you tomorrow.